There was a world champion figure skater from Canada named Caitlin Osman. And at 22 years old, she retired after winning the world championships. And so she had been to the Olympics, and after the Olympics, she had won this world championship. She had retired at 22 years old. Suddenly, four years later, in an interview, she talked about how she was lost, how she described herself as a boat adrift at sea. She talked about how difficult it was to transition from being a world-class figure skater her whole entire life up to that point to all of a sudden not having that part of her identity in her life. She says her success and her love of fig figure skating was how she made sense of the world. And it's how she I, I built up her identity. And all of a sudden it was gone. There is a, a counselor named Kara Button who has started an organization who helps athletes transition in retirement. And she says that this is not uncommon. She says that athletes often struggle with their identity after they retire. Because if you think about sports and athletics in our society, they're, they're, law, they're a lot of activity. People who, who are athletes are lifted up in our society. And, and not only that, but to be a good athlete, it has to consume all of your being. From waking up to going to sleep at night, what you eat, how you, how you, how you eat and how you work out, and all the things you have to, to practice in order to be world class. It's an all-consuming process. And it really, it's harmful when, they, when that leaves their life because a whole piece of who they were is now gone. How they identified as people was gone out of their life. They said it can be extremely hard. This woman, um, Kara Button, said it can be extremely hard because quite, uh, I, athletes are asking, who am I if I'm not an athlete? What's interesting about me outside of sports? And they have to go through a whole process of building themselves up again. Now think about this. Athletes, being an athlete in sports is a, is a, is a really easy example to go to. But think of all the ways that we, not just athletes, but we claim our identities. We use our appearance. We use our education, our jobs, our hobbies. We use how much money we make. We use how successful we are. Even things like being a parent. Some of these things can become our identity. We can be so consumed with these, with these parts of ourselves that they can become our identity and who we are as people. Anything we build an identity around. It can, not just this list, but anything that we build our identity around. It can be dangerous. Someone called these the trappings of ego that help us get through an ordinary day. They're not bad. But we have to be careful about how we identify ourselves. And these things that, that we identify ourselves, Thomas Merton calls those our false self. Others call them our separate self. Or sometimes people refer to it as the mask. It's the outer layer that we use to get through this world. But they're not necessarily who we are. And sometimes the things that we build our worlds around can become the monsters that tear us down. Richard Rohr says, when we get too comfortable with our separate selves, when we get too comfortable with our mask, when we get too comfortable with our false self, and you call it life, then you'll get trapped at that level. You'll hold on to it for dear life, because that's the only life that you think you have. You all know a parent that has identified themselves as a parent. They've poured their whole entire life into to being a parent, and then all of a sudden their child goes off to college, and what happens to the parent? They don't know what to do. They've lost themselves and, and because they poured everything into being a parent and they've lost things that they're interested in, things that they like to do, their job. It can be very difficult because they've over-identified themselves as a parent and a parent only. And so what I want us to re remember and think about is that each one of us has a flickering flame of divine love in the deepest parts of ourselves. 
It's the divine light of love, of life, of being, and it's the divine light of God. And it's at the very center of our being. This is our true self. If we think about having our false self as, as a costume that we wear around the, the outsides of our beings, there's this flame that's in the middle that is our true self. And all of our false selves, while they're not bad, but if we stay at that outer level, we never get in touch with our true self. Our true self, which is our true identity in God our unchangeable identity in God. And it's not only our true identity within ourselves, but it also connects us with each and every person and being in this world because it's that same flame that fires within us that is within each and every person and each and every being. And so being stuck in this outer mask and this outer layer prevents us from truly connecting with our true identity in God. And in order to get past the mask, we have to experience a death. And that death is the death of our identity in whatever it is we've identified ourselves with. Whether it's being a man or a woman, whether it's being a doctor or a lawyer or a, or, or a server or how, whatever profession you take on. However, I, whatever identity that you've put so much weight into and it's allowed you to get through this, this world and this life. If that's how you identify yourself, eventually we have to die to that self in order to get into the deepest core of our being and realize that that's just an outer mask that's unimportant in the whole eternal grand scheme of things. Our importance is being one with God and being in, living in that divine light and having the faith that that divine light is where our true self lies And we're going to be good because when we're attached to that light, we know that God takes care of us. And this is why I think that Jesus went after Peter in the way that he did. Because Jesus talks to his disciples about having to die and then coming back and being resurrected. And Peter can't handle that. Peter, the rock of the church, can't handle that. And he says, don't talk about that, Jesus. What are you talking about? Don't say that. And Jesus realized that Peter, his faithful disciple Peter, he was denying that divine truth of death and resurrection. He was denying that divine truth that in order to reach new life, as Jesus says, we have to die to ourselves. Mark puts it, if anyone wished to come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Dying to these masks, dying to these ways that we identify ourselves in this world in order to get by allows us to live into our true self. And then when we die to that, that mask, we're resurrected in new life. It's the, it's the divine cycle that this whole season is about. We have birth, we have life, and we have death. And then we have new birth and new life. That's the divine cycle of God. Nothing is ever truly, truly dies, but comes back anew. Because God promises us that death does not have the final say. And so Jesus here is symbolically saying that in order to follow him, in order to follow the path of God, we have to die to all these ways that we try, that our ego tries to build ourselves up. Because it's our ego self that builds these masks for a good reason. It's not, again, it's not that they're bad. They've actually, they actually can help us. Early in our life, they can help us get through this world, and they can actually help us and save our, save our lives sometimes. But that can't be. Eventually, we have to let go of that identity and get into our true identity in God and allow God to lead us in ways that only God can. And when we look at Genesis, we look at the story of Abraham and Sarah. Neither one of them were perfect. There's some really troubling things that go on in Abraham's life. That Abraham surrendered to God 
and surrendered all the ways that he might have thought he was supposed to be, supposed to live. We see him prostrate himself to God as God is speaking to him. And as the symbol of new life, I believe that's why God gives them their new names. As a symbol that you have died to your former self when you are being given life anew. And so your dead self of, of Abram is now a new life in Abraham. Your dead life as Sarai is now a new life in Sarah. It's a symbolic way for us to see that they have given up their lives in order to follow God. And so that's what I see in the season of Lent. It's one way that we can turn our lives back and follow the path of Christ is to notice all these masks that we wear, all these things that we find meaning in that are not of God. All these ways that we claim our identity, which is just an egoic identity and not an identity in God. It can be literally anything. It can even be our religion. We can put so much weight on our religion that we lose our faith. We can place so much of our identity, like I said, in being a parent, that we lose ourselves. We can put so much focus on our profession and advancing up the corporate ladder or advancing up whatever ladder it is that we place ourselves upon, that we lose our ways, our, our, our true self. And so we need to find a way to get rid of that mask, to die to that self, to reach our true self, to reach the place of love, life, and being. Howard Thurman, the great mystic and theologian, said that when we go deep down inside of ourselves, when we allow ourselves to do that we, and we approach somebody else, we then can go and when we make contact with that other person, we can see in their eyes and we can go down deep within them and the deepest part of ourselves can connect with the deepest part of themselves and we become one because of that being willing to go down into our place of life and love and being. We are all indeed connected. But we have to be able to get past that outer layer, these costumes, kind of that, that rockish outside that we need to, to, to break apart in order to get in into that light. And so one question we might want to ask ourselves right now in this season of Lent is what masks are we wearing? Where are we placing our identity that is not our true identity in God? Where are we finding our importance? Where are we finding our, 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 our way of being in this world that is at the surface level and not at the deepest level of who we are? And then we have to go to, into a process of confronting that self and dying to that self. And dying is scary. Death is scary. The unknown that comes out of death can be extremely uh, daunting. But as a people of the way, we have to trust that God's got us. And our faith in God will lead us into a new way that is pleasing to God and healing to us. What are we holding on to during this season of Lent that we might need to die to and ex experience a death of in order to get to follow Christ and get into that flame of light, that flame of love with Jesus. Amen.